Oh, good morning. Uh, my name's Noldy and it's my privilege to be here in Tipahu at Ballyburg Farm. And with me I've got Bernard Kelly here, the farm owner and manager, and also Jen Corcoran from Baron Brug Seeds. So it's our pleasure to have a little conversation today and share a little bit of insight, um, pick Jenny's brains about um, pasture maintenance really. We're standing here in, a, in an established paddock that's um, got some ryegrass in it, a few other weeds and things, and, and plenty of docks certainly. Um, which means, Bernard, that if you ever caught short down the farm, that uh, you will not uh, not go without. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. But look, we're going to talk today about a pasture maintenance plan because I don't know if you've got one, Bernard, but we never had one when I was running the farm. No. Um, um, so we just want to ask Jen, is it worth having a pasture maintenance plan to sort of look after our pastures and control our weeds and all that sort of stuff? Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I'm not sure if, the, if anything really formally exists in terms of like templates, but there's certainly a, a huge network of people out there that could help set up pasture maintenance plans. And for me, you know, this, this stuff, ryegrass and clover-based pastures, are homegrown feed, and harvesting as much of that as possible, we know results in the most profitable systems. Uh, so if we can be getting the best out of every blade of grass across a paddock and a farm, then we're going to be doing the best. But the only way to, to have anything really survive or succeed is to have a maintenance plan, right? So mm -hmm. if you think of anything in, in your life, it doesn't usually work out unless you're, you're, you're caring for it or, or you've got a plan around looking after it. So with grass and clover pastures, I think it, it's exactly the same thing. So there's a few things at play. Um, firstly, you want to start with a paddock that's, that you're happy with. So Bernard, I'm aware you might be going to do some chicory on platform in spring. Yes. Thinking about it. And what are you, what's your reasoning behind that? Uh, just to renovate paddocks, um, do the full thing like drain, get rid of the weeds and plant new seeds. Yeah, get the perennial, a good perennial ryegrass established. Yeah, cool. So that, that's the first, is a good first point yeah, really, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Because yeah. if we've got a paddock that's running out or a weed's coming in, or there's an underlying issue, we're going to have hard hard time maintaining that paddock because there's actually something wrong with it, right? So going through a crop or a forage crop like chicory can be quite a good tool. You know, we've already talked about maize and that you're, you're driving that part of your mm -hmm. pasture renewal from the maize yep. crop, right? So that's a little bit different. Whereas going through, you know, strategically going through chicory or a small seed forage crop means you're going to have some time to go at your paddock and sort out what the underlying issues are. So for you, perhaps it's drainage down the bottom end. Yes. And also weeds. Weed. Yeah, because weeds are not <coughs> what we want to be eating all the time. Uh, so, so me looking from the outside, he's got weeds there, but why why are they there? Why haven't they been controlled? I mean, have yeah. you got a spray program that should be controlling them or... Yeah. Or does that happen to, no matter what you do, do weeds creep in? Or, yeah, you know? good point. So that, that's what, what comes down to the maintenance plan. So if we've got a, okay. a good base to start with, yeah. so we've gone through chicory maybe over two years. So chicory mm -hmm. in spring, then an annual ryegrass through the winter. Every time you're going, you're changing over, and if you can do it all sort of minimum tillage, then that's good. Yes. You've got a chance to sort out some of the issues. So you start working on the drainage this spring, or maybe you decide you're going to do that in autumn, and you just put the chicory in this spring. But you've got these multiple sprays out of the paddock to control the spring germinating weeds, control the autumn germinating weeds, and by yes. the time you're going into this permanent 100 ton crop pasture, you're hopefully going to have a reasonably weed free seed bed to begin right. with. Yep. Then you do all the good things that we've talked about already in yep. a previous chat around mm. uh, setting up your new grass to last, then you're going to hopefully start off with a paddock that's not full of weeds, okay? Now, we can begin with the pasture maintenance because we want to maintain that goodness over time. So weeds are hugely important. So having that, you know, weed sprays done through the establishment period at the right time. Yeah. And then getting someone on farm, a chem rep, that's going to tell you what weeds you're dealing with and whether they're spring germinating weeds, whether they're autumn germinating weeds, uh, whether they're perennial weeds, whether they're annual weeds, and when best to spray them to get that kill. Mm -hmm. You're not going to want to suddenly go into chicory or forage crop on all of your farm if you've got a weedy farm, right? So you might yeah. be able to start with the worst paddocks and then and then move into a program. But maintenance yeah. will mean perhaps that every spring you need to do a weed spray with this certain chemical that's going to control this spring germinating weed that's a pain in yep. your farm. Can, can, I, can I just cut you off there? Because years ago we used to just every winter you'd do a pasture spray. Yeah. And that's... And you did it in winter because the clovers are dormant, yeah. and it was 2,4-D, 
a bare bottle an acre of 24D, which was about two and a half, three litres a hectare. Yep. And that's just what we did to keep our farms under control. So is that yeah. not relevant anymore? Yeah, well, I mean, I can't comment too much to no. the exact chemicals that we are using or when we do it. But what I do know is that we're seeing different weeds yeah. on farm a yeah. little bit now. We're seeing them germinating at different times. You know, yeah. we've got slightly different conditions and almost slightly different stocking rates to what we had. Mm. Uh, maybe Back in my day, maybe yeah, I know. Okay, ten or okay, twenty okay, years okay, ago, okay. but no, it's a fair question because everyone used to just do the winter weed spray, right? It's yeah. a common thing, and people, yeah. some people yeah. still do, and it works yeah. for them in certain areas. Yeah. However, you need to know what you're dealing with because you may as well, if you're going to be spending the money, <laughs> be putting it on at the right time. Right. So yeah, yeah. That's the key, <clears throat> yeah. and yeah. it might even be that your chem rep says, "Hey, look, you need to do a winter weed spray." Yeah. Yes. You're back yeah. to it, or yeah. you might control these new weeds that have come in. And then you're back to winter weed spray in three or four years' time. Yeah. But whatever it is, you yeah. have a maintenance yeah. plan, and it will be for weeds. Yeah. Yep. And the next one's probably fertility. So soil fertility and soil structure. Mm. So having a maintenance plan or an understanding of where your soil structure is for a start. If you've been through maize, you know there's a chance that the structure might be slightly compromised. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to be slightly more careful with that paddock with grazings. It might require more careful management in the wet because it's a bit mm -hmm. softer underneath. Softer. And we're going to have to be careful in the dry that it doesn't pan up as well. Uh, fertility, uh, sorry, so soil structure is one part of that maintenance plan, just knowing where you're at, digging holes, and then treating the paddock accordingly. The second one is fertility. So hopefully doing soil tests annually through blocks of the farm that might be similar in any paddock that's been cropped to know where you're yes. at. So new grass and clover pastures will survive and will maintain themselves well if they've got enough food to survive. Okay. So I think that's the second fold thing. The third one with maintenance is a good pasture management practice and plan. Oh, yeah. Back to the yeah, Back to that. length and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. again, uh, what you know, it's Disneyland the rules, right? Graze at the right time, graze to the right residual, repeat. Not mm -hmm. always possible, right? It's yes. pouring down with rain for three weeks. How do I yeah. graze my paddocks? I can't put yeah. the animals under cover for yeah. a month yeah. in New Zealand necessarily. So what are you going to do? Are you going to have some sacrifice paddocks that are going into crop anyway, yeah. or going into maize, or going um, into something, where we do just, you know, treat them, send the animals off on them, feed out on them. Hopefully some people have got feed pads or areas that they can use. Um, the other one's the dry management plan. Yeah. Yeah. It hasn't rained for two months. The pastures aren't growing at all. We can't just keep moving animals around. So there's a lot we can't control with the weather and what we're doing. But having a plan for all plans or all events is, is, is key. So Bernard, when it's uh, in the dry, when it's really really dry, what do you how do you handle that? Do you still keep on going around the farm or? We try to avoid the drier areas of the farm, so yeah. there will be through the middle of the farm is generally wetter paddocks. Yeah. So we rotate them nearly on a 25 day rotation. So you just give them a lot lot less area. Probably just give them smaller area, yeah. but it is still growing grass yeah. just in the wet areas. Yeah. So we'll give them that at night, they'll be on the feed pad during the day and then we'll put them on a sacrifice paddock as yeah. well where they'll get fed out bale silage. Yeah. So that yeah. will be a paddock that will be cropped in future. Yeah, okay. so do it so, and when yeah. it rains, do you, how long do you wait before you start going around the farm again? Because some people say, right, it's raining, good, away we go again now, or do you just hold on for... What? We try and hold on for as long as possible, as long as practically possible. But. Uh, to put a figure on it, but maybe three weeks if yeah. possible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What do you? Is that? Does that make sense? So, when, it, when it's rain, giving it three weeks to really till her up. Try and get the grass get above the, two thousand cover, yeah. probably. Yeah. If we wanted yeah. to put a figure on yeah. it. No, totally. So, the whole the science of what's happening is, once it rains, recovery will be as fast or as slow as the reserves that have been left in their plant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you've been on a zero grazing policy on some of these paddocks, which yes. it sounds like you do, which is, is actually perfect management. Yeah. yeah you're going to get quick recovery because yeah. those water soluble carbohydrates yeah. stored in the stem of the ryegrass plant they just sit there and wait for rain yeah. but if we keep grazing them it's yeah. like chewing into a battery or it's like charging your phone to 10% and then trying to take a phone call mm. multiple times until you run out and yeah. then the recovery is really slow mm. so you know there's no reason why you won't be back in a paddock that you've had a zero grazing policy on in 21 okay. to 24 days because yeah. that's had... two and a half to three yes. leaves if you've had good rain yeah. yeah yeah okay uh, otherwise, you know, if you haven't had good rain, uh, sorry, if you have had good rain but you've overgrazed, you might be six or eight weeks yeah, 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 yeah. Just of recovery, recovery time. So yeah. it doesn't, you know, even if you're not really can't remember what you did or you're coming onto a new farm, if you've got to that two and a half, 
leaf stage or two, two mm -hmm. just over 2,000 cover probably at that time of the year, boom, no worries to get into it. Cool. Yeah. Good. So that's really good. Another question I had, and that's about like mowing, pre-mowing, not not so much about to control your pastures, but what about your weeds, you say? Mm. I haven't done my spray program, there's weeds everywhere, why don't I just mow it before it all seeds, cows will eat it, job's right. Does that work or not? It can work, yeah. I mean... Save on all these sprays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah. you won't there's, there's, there's also a huge weed uh, seed bank in, in the soil yeah. often. Yeah. And then, you know, Cutting before grazing, when you've got a lot of weed in the paddock, sometimes they do mop up the weeds, sometimes yeah. they leave them behind. But yeah. at the end of the day, um, what tools you can use in the meantime might be what you decide to use. I wouldn't have my maintenance plan Land. as let's mow yes. in the spring for <laughs> weeds. Yeah. But we might have it in the maintenance plan, let's mow to produce, to prevent reseeding of the yes. grasses and yes. daughter tillering and okay. all that jazz. So, okay. yeah, the only other thing is some of these weeds will just keep going to seed over and over again too. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. necessarily solve the problem. But, yeah. okay. you know, there's, there's many tools in the toolbox and you've got to often reassess what tools you need. <laughs> because we can't do everything at once and have this perfect easy maintenance plan that's going to work, right? Mm. So mm. there's going to be paddocks that are easier and there's going to be paddocks that are more tricky. Mm. So that okay. might be part of the toolbox, but I wouldn't have it on the top shelf. Mm. 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 Okay. How do you know which paddock to do next? I mean, do you do you go and assess them and, like, have you got some sort of method how you assess which paddock to crop next or...? Just, just walk, like we do the regular farm walks, yeah. and whenever we just see a paddock that high percentage of weeds, yeah. weed species, yeah. and that's we'll just target the worst yeah. paddocks first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and another, and then we'll put chicory into the paddocks on the sidelings that we can't put in maize, and then maize up on the flatter, nice. flatter land. Yeah. So that's the program basically going forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you can only do so much cropping. So a paddock like this is this on your hit list or what? What's the plan with this if you've got, if it's not going to be maize or any other crop, will you just target this? This will be targeted with weed spray, weed spray. Um, going by what New Farm Rep had yep. said to us previously, yep. was to target this, uh, the cress yep. in springtime is the yep. best time to hit it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're, that's, yep. any paddocks that we can't yep. crop, we, we'll, we'll get onto a, yep. a spray program. Yep. We did stop the spray program for the reason we wanted the clover to come back again, but it's obviously not yeah. working, so that's why we re revert it back to yeah. annual spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's a, there's a good, and the chemical rebel talk you through all this stuff uh, on farm, but the small, you know, when the weeds are tiny, very easy to kill, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and you can use soft chemistry, right? Chemistry that won't necessarily hurt yeah. the clover. Yeah. Whereas when they get big, yeah. it's harder. Yes. So timely spraying at the right time for the germination phase of your weeds yeah. can actually be quite easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when you, you know, when they get big, it becomes more difficult. So, mm. yeah, so good to get that good advice, I think, is, mm. is really important mm. too. Uh, so, you're doing regular uh, pasture walks, get a huge amount of data and information from Yes. Them. So, are you uh, looking at sort of paddock performance outside of weeds, for example? Are you looking at paddock performance in terms of grazing days or amount growing uh, as well? So, yes. Yeah, cool. Um, Fertility, keeping yep. an eye on the fertility and what nice. where we need to hit with the fertility. Yep. Um, with the new effluent system, we've just installed with um, treating the liquid as nitrogen and the solids as phosphorus. We're sort of going to target the solids will go on the maize paddocks, nice. and then we'll try and get the the nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, around the farm to all the other areas that probably just needs a bit more. Yeah attention yeah that's great so one of the things and that is a really is really great the the you know the soil structure side of things can be maize can be quite hard on that at times mm. so putting on basically straight organic matter yes building that soil back up is, is is actually is amazing so that's good so any paddocks for example um with your pasture walk you're happy with not too many weeds performing well just leave them alone yes yeah, and that's the idea, right? So in summary then, as far as pasture maintenance ongoing for established grass, um, identify your weeds, target them with the right chemical at the right time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's, if you can do cropping programs, take them through a cropping program. It's, and, it's, and if there's underlying issues in that paddock, it's yep. a chance to sort that out. Yep. Drainage. Drainage. Yes. Or you're oh, yeah, changing a fence around or something. Yep. All yep. that sort of stuff, do it then. Um, fertility. Um, what else was it? 
weeds. Animals. 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 Overgrazing. Undergrazing. Yeah. All that yeah. sort of stuff. All the rules. Staying off it after a dry spell like you do. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And, and I other? think targeting, yeah, and the part of the maintenance plan, I think that's really important, and you're doing it well here by the sounds of it, is is targeting that spring pasture management, because undergrazing, like we talked about earlier yeah. too, yeah. Uh, is yeah. just about as evil, if not more evil, than overgrazing, because it means we get less clover, canopy closure, and we get less tillering, which is thickening up and preventing weeds from coming in in the first place. So and then, so topping is still a good tool to have if you don't get it right. A great tool. Yes, and obviously when it's wet, it's basically impossible in the mm -hmm. spring to hit residual, yeah. okay? Yeah. You're better not to because you're going to do yeah. more damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. So whether you reset the residual as soon as you can or at the next grazing or after the next grazing, it doesn't really matter. But just remembering, animals will graze down to what was left there last time. Mm -hmm. We don't want this happening mm -hmm. over the spring because then once summer comes and everything dries out, it's like a wire rope. And we get pulling Pulled, in all sorts pulling. of issues, especially yeah, right. in X yeah. sort of yeah. cultivated paddocks. So keeping those residuals at whatever it is, six centimetres, five centimetres, whatever your normal residual is, fifteen hundred. Keep it the same. Maybe, yeah. Keep it consistent. So consistent. That, that, that uh, residual is so important for all your farming, eh? I think so. Like if, key to everything, if I had to pick one thing from yep. pasture management. It would be residual. Residuals, yeah. Post grazing residual. Yeah. And to hit that easily, you have to have gone in at the right time too. Yeah. Because if we've got long yeah. grass, yeah. we've got dead tillers in yes. the base, it's like yeah. it's yeah. like there's a bit of rotten yeah. cabbage on your dinner yep. plate, so yeah. you're not going to utilise the dinner plate fully and mm. I'm sure no restaurant would serve that up. So, <laughs> so yeah. Right rotation length, and you've learned that 24 days, not 25. Yes. Like 24 days. <laughs> no. Slapping the rest. Because, <laughs> no, that could be perfect because you might have like grown one leaf in nine days in the other yeah, two. Yeah, okay. and, yeah. <laughs> and it does vary, it changes. So. Okay, good. Yeah. Probably going into summer, whenever we start to slow down the round mm. and we do start to build a bit of cover, probably not unlike now, is that a bad thing? Going by what you're saying about the, the, the tillers getting sunlight. Yeah, so you, you mean building cover, like pre like building your overall farm covers going yeah. into summer? Yeah, pushing your cover ahead of you. Just pushing yeah. it, you know, Rotation. going a slower round and... Yeah, um, as long as we're not ending up with a whole farm full of grass that's getting away on us, mm -hmm. there's no problem in doing that. Yeah. Uh, and if you've got tools in which you can quickly harvest it if you are getting lots yeah. of wet yes. weather and stuff, so yeah. there's no harm in that at all. The thing I, I do not like when, far, when when people decide to start bringing their residuals up going into summer because they you know there's, there's a school of thought that says you know you're going to protect the the ground from drying out so quick because yeah, you've got longer yeah. grass yeah. Uh, that's not really true so the, the, the rye grass itself is the plant is the thing that's that's losing a lot of the moisture yes. from the ground. It keeps on drawing it out, eh? Yes. That's the opposite yes. of what you think. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. so um, yeah. it's hard yeah. to explain, but that's yeah. essentially what's happening. Yeah. So yeah. you know, like, summer fallow they use in, in Marlborough and in dry parts of New yes. Zealand and Central Otago because the day you spray out a paddock... Stops um, using moisture. No moisture's leaving. Yeah, right. So that's when yeah. they drill it two months later, and I don't yeah. know if this practice is always done, but the moisture that was there on the day of sprout is essentially all there. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. Alrighty. Cool. Well, well, thanks, guys. Really, yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this, and we hope you've got a few tips out of it. So, um, I want to thank Bernard for uh, for your time with us, and, and for those uh, for those delightful questions you've been asking, Jen. And Jen, we appreciate your time. Thank no you for your help, and we look forward to uh, growing lots of grass and having no weeds and just a really <laughs> productive year next year. So, thank you for listening. Um, yeah, on behalf of us here at Smash, enjoy the rest of your day.